Welcome to The Dark Side, a podcast from Crafty Terrain, YouTube channel. And tonight on the show, I'm joined by Ilya and I'm joined by Nick. How are you doing, Ilya? I'm good, thank you. Good. And Nick? I'm okay, thanks. Good, good. I'm doing well as well. It's happy to have you on and I'm really excited to get into this podcast, obviously episode one. So I'm just going to outline some of the things that we're going to talk about and some of the aims for the podcast. So we're going to talk a little bit about the channel and the direction in which we want to take the channel and things that we've got planned and doing. But in general, we're just going to be having a chat about Legion, how our experience of getting into Legion as new players, how we found things, and hopefully just have a general chat. We might cover some rules, things and stuff like that, list building um, and talk about units and stuff. So let's just start with a nice, simple question. We'll start with you, Ilya. We'll say, um, what, what do you like about the game the most? Yeah, so um, it, it's my first like proper war game, really, because before that I played a lot of Magic. Um, so what, what really got me into Legion, um, it, it, the, the strategy side of it and the competitive nature of the game, um, I find really interesting. So it, it almost feels like you're playing um, like 3D chess almost. Um, like so with all the pieces moving different ways shooting different ranges it's not as intimidating to get into as well um, as say like Warhammer so you've got the measuring tools and you've got the rulers so um, yeah so like I really enjoy the strategy really and the and the competitive nature so I aim to crush my enemies <laughs> I can really relate to that as well myself I've always had a side of me that's been into strategy games from when I was a kid playing like the Command and Conquer computer games and things like that. And then I got into Wargaming. I did play a little bit of Warhammer in my very early teens. I didn't really take to it and didn't really um, understand the hobby side of things. So the painting I found very difficult. And there was a lot of barriers back then because there weren't so much internet and things like that. But then I've also played Magic and stuff like that and um, played a lot of American football, which is very strategic. So I've always had that need to have um, a strategy game or be involved in strategy. Um, and I stumbled across Legion actually through playing Magic in a local game store. And I saw it on the shelves and I thought, oh, what's this? A war game that Star Wars, always been a big Star Wars fan ever since I was a kid. And that's sort of how I just got into it. And then um, I found myself going to have a lot of time on my hands at home just because I had to have a knee surgery. And I thought this is going to be a real good time for me to paint again um, and pass the time so I don't get bored. And that's what got me into Legion, basically. I bought a starter box. Um, and how the channel got born was I was talking to Nick and we were talking about starting a YouTube channel and all the rest of it. Um, and I thought it'd be really interesting to just record our journey, so to speak, getting into a new war game and the painting and the hobby side of things. And that's what we did. Started filming some videos. I bought a big box off eBay of secondhand stuff, converted some of it, stripped some of the paint, painting them up. And Nick started to edit the videos. And that's how Crafty Train was born, really. And it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride. I think it's been about coming on to 10 months now. And the channel's growing. It's doing well. And the part reports are going great. So really enjoying it. How about you, Nick? So, yeah, like Ilya said, the strategic nature, I really like that. Obviously, I got into Wargaming playing the Lord of the Rings game with you. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's Star Wars and, you know, a big fan since I've been like a kid, since my dad took me to the cinema to watch Return of the Jedi. Cool. When I was like six. Um, yeah, I do, and then obviously the YouTube channel, when we started that, that's obviously given me a bigger drive to get into the game more. So obviously, we're trying to grow the channel, make it a success. So that has made me go away and look at more in depth into the game because obviously we need the knowledge if we've got a channel on it. Um, yeah. But no, no, I'm yeah. enjoying it. It's really good. Yeah, I think it's fair to say, Nick, that I think most, that there's a small group of us now, isn't there, playing Legion? Um, I mean, we, we mostly play at Lee's house and that's how we all got into the game, really, like yeah. through, through Lee and Lee buying the core set and painting it out and buying the, uh, the additional units and just inviting people around, really, and just introducing us to the game. But um, like I said, I've, I've never really like been into um, any war game before. So I've played Lord of the Rings um, at least maybe once or twice, and like it was really good. I enjoyed it. But um, I was really a lot more of a, like a magic player. Um, so we used to go to tournaments and stuff like that. But um, it's just 
like getting into war gaming is a, it just always felt like it's a lot it's difficult you need to you need to learn how to paint and you know it's like cumbersome because so like if you go to you know say magic tournaments you just bring a, a little deck with you in a bag and that's it so the the logistics behind say traveling like to play competitive um if you're playing a war game like i, I, I can't even imagine what it's like because you know you, you have to have a big box with you you know with all your minis and that kind of stuff so yeah 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 i agree i do think you know Obviously, as we've set up the channel and started this journey, COVID hit. So we've not actually been able to go and play at local game stores and stuff yet. We've literally just built our own little community. And there's about eight, nine of us or whatever now that are playing, which is fantastic, really, if you think it's just been us that's been doing it. To have this little small community is great. But I understand what you're saying about wargaming. And there are more barriers to getting into wargaming than there are than other games because of the hobby side of it. The learning to paint can be very daunting for people, I think. Um, especially because when you go online and you look at all these like Instagrams and all these like um, professional painted stuff, they all look amazing. And I remember when I first started painting, I looked at mine and in my head I thought it was okay. But then when you look at pictures, it just doesn't live up to the professional painted stuff. It takes a long time. <laughs> To learn to paint so there is that barrier with the hobby sort of the game but, um yeah i do think that legion is a very well balanced strategy game as well it's very um well thought out from a design point of view um and it's, very, um, think... oh, it's very iconic as well that's what i like about it but with the heroes yeah. like luke and vader and it's an iconic yeah. game everyone knows yeah. it. it it draws you to it because because of the characters in the game Yes, I completely agree. Having that movie knowledge to fall back on helps you to relate to the characters that you're playing. And I think the design space in which they've been designed, I mean, Vader or Commander Vader on the table feels like Vader from the movie. He's slow moving, he walks you down, and he's hard to kill when he gets there. He's very, very powerful. I really like how the characters relate to how they are in the films and stuff. It's very clever design. See, um, it, it it's really weird for me because I was I was never a massive Star Wars fan um, until we started playing. So I've never watched all of the films until we started playing. When when did we start? Maybe November last year or something like that. Yeah, that's that's um, So so between November and like now, I watched all the films. So like I sort of knew the story, but I was never really that much into it. So like okay. I, I was a lot more into sort of the Lord of the Rings and like the fantasy rather than the sci-fi. Okay, but um. Just getting into the game, so I kind of come from the opposite direction to you guys. So like okay. you all start, you what you all watch the films and you know the story, and that's why you you think the game is cool. Um, I've actually like come from the other side where I think the game is really good, and it made me want to watch the films. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's a good you know, different journey, but I guess you can appreciate the films now, and it must. I guess for most people, the films are something that are iconic that you relate to their childhood. And I think that's another thing that's good about Legion. You've got sort of players that are sort of my age that grew up with the original trilogy. Then you've got the next generation that sort of grew up with the Clone Wars sort of stuff and the Clone Wars cartoons. And now hopefully, you know, you'll have another younger generation coming in off the new stuff that Disney are doing. So the game's got a lot of room to grow. Um, obviously, Disney are going to keep making Star Wars stuff, which is going to lead to more content for us as Legion players, which is fantastic, obviously. Yeah, definitely. So, what do we think then? So if we could, ch- let's talk about if we could, so we talked about what we like, let's talk about if we could change something to the game. Is there something that you'd like to change or something that you don't like about the game? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll start this one. Um, so I think between when we started playing and now, so obviously COVID hit, so that might be one of the reasons, but um, it's been really, really difficult just to get your hands onto anything, just any sort of products. Um, it's been really, really difficult. So I don't know if it's a problem with the supply line. But so um, like we managed to get um, the Clone Wars core set at some point. Yeah. Um, and then it, it's just been impossible to get anything else to go with it. So it's actually been really challenging to try and build like an 800 point army. Um, yeah. with the with the clones um with with just the corset really and not a lot yeah. to go with it yeah i agree i agree but i do think that is a negative side to 
to Legion, I don't think it's a negative side to the game. I think the game's like fine. That's more of a company logistics problem that FFG need to sort because it is a definite negative aspect to getting into Legion, absolutely. And I mean, I can see how it would put people off if they can't get the units that they want to buy and they'll just go and play another game. I think, in my, me personally, being someone that uh, played like uh, GW games, like Games Workshop stuff before, I think the way that they have their logistics set up and the way that they do their previews is a much better model. I mean, I think FFG do a great job, but they preview stuff that's like six months down the line. And by the time that yeah, we get there, yeah. there's no hype around it because we've been waiting six months. And then even then when it comes out, if you haven't pre-ordered, you'll struggle to get it after. Where I just think if they just waited, give you a four-week window to preview and then went from there, preview it four weeks' time, it's out. I think that would be a much better thing to do. But I know the other side to that is people do like to have the models on TTS early after people are ready for when tournaments start and stuff. So there would be a downside to that, but I do think it would fix that logistical problems because um, all the products could already be with distributors by the time that they preview them. I think it would fix that. Uh, what about you, Nick? Is there anything that you'd like to see changed, either on the tabletop or anything like that? I don't know, really. I think a couple of units should have maybe a point drop, like Baba, maybe, just to get him played more. Because I know a lot of people don't like Baba, but I really like him. And yes. I know Ilya is a massive fan of Bosco over Baba. Yes, uh, yeah. Bosk is just good, Nick. He's just he's just good. <laughs> no, I agree that he's good. It's just I really like Baba. I don't know whether it, I'm a bit nostalgic towards him. Just Ooh, he's a don't, big don't, don't get me don't get me wrong. Like I think Baba's a, like he's great as a character. And when we first started playing, like I texted Lee straight away, and I was like, "Oh, do you have Baba?" And Lee was like, "No." I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna try and get him." <laughs> so, yeah, like, I, I think he's, I think he's a I think he's a great character, man. Don't get me wrong. I just, I just don't think he's that good in the game anymore. I know, um, I know, like I, I was trying to catch up on the game because we kind of missed the first like year and a half of you know of the game. Um, Boba, Boba used to be a thing. Like he was really good, from what I can see. But I think he's, you know, his time has kind of just passed slowly. Yeah, yeah. he's been passed by other, other expansions coming out and stuff. But I'm still really, I think it's a nostalgia of him, to be honest. But yeah, he's one yeah, he, of he's my a really cool character. Yeah, and like maybe if he had a points drop, like yeah, people would take him more. And I do think Nick, I do like you know things do need to get um like changed on the points and the erratas and stuff like that. And I do think FFG do a good job of doing that because they've done it in the past to units and stuff like that, haven't they? Like the air speed has got lowered, um, the speed of bikes got lowered, so they do try to keep up and stuff and. I think they like to do it every 12 months, which I think it's fair to let players just, when new stuff comes out, sort of figure it out themselves and let things just play out. And then when things need changes, because again, for me, I think the biggest one there would a lot, I'd love to see Han Solo get a point drop so he actually becomes playable and we see him on the table more because I really like Han. And again, mm. I think that's a nostalgia thing from the original trilogy, but I think we will get that. And I think it is planned very soon. I know we've just had... Um, the rules update and stuff, but I think there's going to be more rules update coming when um, Maul and Anakin come out. So we might even see a clone nerf, which everyone's been hoping for, but we didn't, we just, we didn't get it in this <laughs> Hang one. On. <laughs> Hang on. O officially, the ARC troopers are not even out. <laughs> We're talking about a nerf. <laughs> no, I don't mean to the ARC. I don't mean to the ARC. I just mean on the standby token sharing is I think what might get changed. And I think Oh, I think I think the clones are fine. Like like without the ARCs, they're they're fine. They're not they're not busted without the before arcs. we they're, go they're any just, they're just before good. we go any further, can I just ask what faction do you play, Lee? <laughs> play clones, yeah. Oh, that's what. That's why you think clones are okay then. <laughs> they're, they're fine, literally. Like, I, I mean, I know the arcs are like a little bit good, but without the arcs, they're, they're okay. Like, I think yeah. that, I mean, that you know, they're on the good side, but you know, your basic units like ninety points. Yeah, I just think it's the it's not that they are overpowered it's the feel of the token sharing on the standbys it feels bad when you're playing against it i'm not saying but, that be cool. i'm not I, saying that they're too good i think the token sharing is supposed to offset 
the low activation count is the way I see it. So like, okay, you know, I can get up to like 10 activations at a push. You know, if you're playing Rebels, you can bring 12 easy. I mean, I'm talking, I'm talking 10. That's with a naked like R2D2 unit. Um, yeah. So it, it's it's like 10 activations with one just like a padding. So yeah. I think that the token sharing is supposed to offset the low activation count. But what the ARC Troopers do, um, especially the ARC Trooper strike teams, the 52 points for ARC Trooper strike team is like way, way under costed. Yeah. Um, so, so I can bring three ARC Trooper strike teams and make like 11 activation clone list, <laughs> which is great. And that's what I mean. 10 is quite an average number. So if even if it is a list that's 10 with the clones and R2, and it is padded with things like R2-D2 and stuff like that, it is still 10 activations. And I think it just gets a little bit out of hand with the standbys and stuff, and it shuts down like the units that like force users and stuff like that get shut down a little bit. And like I said, I just think it just doesn't feel good when you play against it. It's not a good experience. That's all. Oh, I played, it, feels, it feels great when you play it. <laughs> well, I played Ilya on TTS the other night and it is daunting playing clones because of the token sharing. Like, because you're just not used to it. So like he was having shots at me and it was, well, I'll use the same token. I'll use the same token. Yeah, you know, one shot <laughs> yeah. at me is using four aims, three surges. It's it's daunting. I know then they can't use them again on another unit, but for that one attack, it is yeah, it just doesn't they feel right. Yeah, they definitely add a different dynamic to the table, and I do think before things start to get nerfed, as in units, so arcs and whatever, I do think we do need a bit more time with everything out and how it plays in real life on the table rather than just TTS because that's been the most experienced obviously at the moment with ARC because they're not released but I do think the token sharing is probably the first thing on the standboys that needs to be looked at not the dodges and the aims and stuff and the surges that's fine but I just think the standboys um, okay so I think we've bashed the clones enough there for uh, episode <laughs> yeah, one I was, def- was going to say let's, let's move on let's stop bashing we'll the def- clones we'll it's be a bit old now to- We'll be back in episode two to bash the clones a little bit more. (laughs) All right, let's go with favourite factions and we'll start with uni. What's your favourite faction as you've got into the game? So when I first started, I was too aggressive to play, I think. Like, I just wanted to come out, shoot. So I hated Rebels because of White Dice. I absolutely hated them. (laughs) So I started learning to play with Empire just because... I could use the red dice and I felt like it gave me a better chance. But now I've got into the game properly. I love rebels. I just love uh, I just love all the heroes. They're just you know, they're the good guys, aren't they? The iconic ones. Like they're just yeah. rebels are my yeah. favourite at the minute. And I think you see that with a lot of new players that like we just had Planty and Pem on the channel and play a game and it's literally from turn one it just becomes a shoot em up And I think everybody's so eager to do that as new players. It's when you learn the game a little bit more that the first few turns of the game get a bit more defensive. Because if you are, like you said, playing Rebels and you've got white saves, if you go at it from turn one, you're probably not on the table at turn four and you've been blasted off, haven't you? So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definite learning curve. So how about you? So Nick's gone with uh, Rebels, Ilya. What's your favourite faction? <laughs> Clowns. Yeah, so I'm gonna say the clowns. Yeah, <laughs> the clowns, <laughs> the clowns. Um, okay. So yeah, when we started playing um, back in like November last year, um, I played I played a lot of Empire, um, and I, you know I, I like I like the good dice. I like the red saves. You know, um, yeah. Clones. It just feels like clones do what the Empire does, but better. Correct. At the moment, anyway. So, like, I get all the best dice. So, um, you know, I shoot with black and red, and I defend. I defend with red dice. Yeah. Um. So, like, what more could you possibly want? So, um, yeah. they also when when we sort of like went to, you know, when we went to like pick up the new core set, the Clone Wars core set, the the mechanics are just so much better. So, like, sharing, being able to share to share the tokens between your units. So when you have this one lone man left out of the squad, he can still be useful. So it's a lot more efficient. So it's a very efficient faction. So you never have, yeah. you know, one man that you have to run away and hide with. You can run away, hide, and still be useful. So it just yeah. feels like a very, very efficient faction. So, um, and that's why I like him, I think. Okay. 
I think I'll with that, I'm going to go with the droids. So for a, for a long time, I really liked the Rebels and I was enjoying playing them. And it would be very close between the droids and the Rebels for myself. I've played a lot more droids recently and I'm enjoying a lot of the activation control they have with the um, chaining their orders together. And I like the idea of the mass numbers. So, you know, your list building and eventually when they get their cheap commander, and they can have like 12 activations up to 14 activations in list. I think I really like that horde feel to the droids and just being able to move up the table and just overwhelm uh, your opponent. Like I always used to like playing as the goblins in uh, Lord of the Rings because you'd get 50 minis on the table and just swarm. And I really, yeah. and that, and I like that feel to the, um, the, the droids. So hopefully moving forward we get that cheap commander which we are and it's going to be real good so looking forward I, to that i think lee i think people are sleeping on on the so like everyone's bashing the clones you know the yeah. clones are yeah. op i think people are underestimating how good the droids will be with the cheap commander yeah so so with that cheap commander you can bring double tank six b1s and <laughs> probably some stops as well. It's, it's just going to be yeah. crazy. Like, it's crazy. I think people yeah. are sleeping on how good they are. And I do think when they get to that, it's like you can have all the good dice that you want, but you're just not going to be able to roll enough dice to kill everything that they've got on the table, potentially, if that makes sense, yeah? Oh, so yeah. I, I think between me and Nick, we brainstormed a couple of lists with, with, with um, you know, the, the new commander, the cheap commander. And it just looks disgusting. Yeah, it, it just is. looks like you can you can put out so many models. Like I will just struggle, you know. So if, if you're playing um if you're playing with like rebels, you don't have the ability to just delete units every time you shoot, you know? Yeah. So you will really, really struggle against like just a massive army of just I know the only white dice says, but when you've got, you know, hundreds of them, good yeah. luck. Good yeah, luck. strength in numbers, isn't it? Strength in numbers, and it's that overwhelming feeling. And I like that if that becomes their identity factor, because I think when droids first came out, that's what everybody wanted them to be, but they just don't have that commando. Obviously, they only get Dooku and Grievous, so they've not had that. So um, it's going to be very interesting when that finally comes at the end or the start of next year, end of this year, and we've got that commander. So, yeah, I'm looking forward. To that is, is is a question as well. So so do you think the new factions are just better than the old factions? Um, no, I don't. I, I, I just think that um, there's been a potential little bit of power creep, but I think the rebels are still very good. I think they're fine, um, and I just I just think the empire is the one that's lacking a little bit, but. Again, they're going to get the special forces coming out in a, in a few weeks, and I think that might change things again for Empire. You know, yeah. Clan Ren will change, Re change Rebels. So I don't think that they are no good. I just think they've been left behind a little bit. Yeah, I think the Empire definitely feel they feel like the weakest faction at the moment. Like they, they just have they just have nothing really going on. So the, there's there's some beef in every faction until you get to the Empire. And like, mm. I mean, you know, you still see them in competition, but it, it, it's like, like I said, it's like, if you're going to play Empire, why don't you just play clones? Correct. Yeah, I think what happened was when clones came out, they became the better gun line. So the Empire gun lines just fell away. The short trooper list, the death troopers and the credit list sort of just fell away, didn't it? But I do think, you know, it's going to, I think the game as it develops, we will get swings and roundabouts and it will just be, uh, the meta will keep evolving and as new units come out, people will develop new lists and we'll see new things. I just think there's also a little bit of, like, you know, clones are new, so people are buying into the game and they want to play clones and stuff like that. So that might be a little bit of a factor, but I do think at the moment the clones are, let's say, if you wanted to put them into tiers, I would say that the clones are the A's. And I think the droid sits somewhere just under A, maybe a B plus. And then I think the rebels are a solid B, if not, if not a B plus. But then I think the Empire have probably just fell into that little C bracket, I think. Not unplayable, but very difficult to win games with at the moment. About the droids, it's so like when I play against droids, it completely changes the way you have to play the game compared to if you was playing a different faction. So if you was yeah. Empire against clones or against rebels, if you play draws, it completely changes 
how you have to play the game just because of the sheer number of them. Okay. Obviously yeah, it just it... makes you think about so much more than just there they are, we've got to do this objective. Because you look and you've just got like a mass on the opposite Coming. side of the table. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I think when you see them on the table and you look at how many bodies, it can be a, a bit daunting and overwhelming. Um, but again, I think clones have that same factor when you see that clone ball and all of a sudden you look over and there's all them green tokens and you're trying to work out who's in range one of this one and all the rest of it. The new factions do have them like abilities to them where I think the older factions like abilities sort of just got, they're a little bit outdated. So what the, the Empire are good at getting aims and stormtroopers are precise. Rebels, are, are their keyword was sort of nimble, weren't it? That's yeah. a little bit... There's been the power creep on that now, and the other two factions have got better built-in abilities, and I think that oh, yeah, yeah, them yeah. the slight edge. So we'll see. No, that's, I think that's definitely correct. So, you, so you're looking at nimble and precise versus you know sharing tokens and like perfect activation control. So like, yeah. I mean, it just it just feels much much better. But the one the one thing that you know rebels have going for them to have very good heroes. They do. Yeah. They do. Agreed. Completely agree. So let's so talking about heroes and stuff then. Let's talk about our favorite unit. So what would you say would be your favorite unit, Ilya? Oh, um okay, well I'm actually gonna go with R2 D2, I think. Okay. Um I think just for what he does and the points cost. So he's he's thirty five units for a naked R2 D2. Yeah. Um so is 35, 35 points for for something that that's gonna potentially fetch you um, a VP, yeah. Yeah. And all and all he's gotta do is just move, 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 move until he gets into your end zone. Yeah. So he's very he's very threatening. He's very cheap and he's very good for what say if you're playing clones. He's very good for what the clone faction. Um, so it, clone clone faction's starving for activations and he's a very cheap good activation. Yeah. I think the other the other plus side to prove using him with clones is for fifteen more points you get C three PO and you get two more green tokens, don't you? That, that are on the yeah. Board. Oh yeah. So if if you've got the spare fifteen points, he just he actually generates the same amount of tokens that you would from say like a naked um, naked squad of like B ones. Yeah. Oh sorry, not B ones. Um, phase ones. Yeah. So you can you can um, calculate odds and then move. So yeah. yeah, so if you've got the spare fifteen points, they're great. And on top of that as well, with with um, C three PO, it's so much easier to get heavy cover. Yes, yes, agreed. agreed. And you gain two more wounds. Yeah, it's, I think taking C three PO is pretty much a no brainer when you're playing close. To be honest, I think you could argue it a bit more if with rebels that you might not want him. But I still think for fifteen points, two extra wounds, and a potential. Aim and um, a dodge turn. I think it's a, a, an easy fifteen points, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think the rebel the rebel army has a lot more competition in that slot. But I mean, up until up until like recently, the clones have only had um, R two D two as as an operative. I mean, now we've got Padme, but I mean, for thirty five points, like you almost have to take him. He's he's just so good at what he does. So like when when I look at the unit, I, I try and I sort of try and see it. I try and I try and look at it. You know, what what do I want the unit to do, and how much yes. does it cost? Yeah. So, so for thirty five points, he's got the ability to steal a game, or say if you're behind on victory points, he can tie you, and then maybe you can win on you know activations destroyed or whatever on points. Yeah. But for thirty five did... points, he's just very good at what he does. Yeah, there's no there's no fat on him. He's the basically he's 35 points. He's nice and cheap, and everything that he does is fantastic. It's great. Oh, yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, he can Perfect. heal himself. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, good choice. Completely agree, Ilya. Yeah, R2's, you know, fantastic uni. How about you, Nick? So it's one I recently played with for the first time. I think it's going to be Cassian. I just really okay. enjoyed that you could just sit back with him, and he just does damage because he's got the unlimited range which they took off the snipers after they originally come out. Yeah. Um, I locked him with K2SO as well. I think yeah. he's, he's good for objectives and stuff. He's got the calculate odds. Yeah. And um, the incognito, obviously, 
did me well in that game, me and you played, Lou. He could just creep up. He could creep up on the objective in the middle until the end turn, have a few pop shots, and then he scores the objective. Yeah. So, yeah, I think Cassian, I do want to play him with him again, but I think I'm just holding him till I play uh, against Ilya's clones. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a bit of a devil's advocate. Don't don't you think he's a bit like if you just sit back with him and shoot? Don't you think he's a bit of an expensive sniper? It just becomes a very expensive sniper unit. I do, yeah. But then you can flip his gun, can't you? Um, yeah. And I think you definitely take K two with him. And I think if you use them correctly, I think they complement each other quite well. Yeah, I think K two K two is very good. So you've got K2 creeping up. Cassian can sort of watch his path. Obviously, yeah. K2 can't be shot. So I think they complement each other quite well. I, I, what I think, you know, and it might be a bit of, you know, a bit optimistic, but it is definitely possible. I think you want them early turns where you can snob with him, pick off a few wounds on a valuable character or pick off mm-hmm. a few expensive units, but then have that ability for turns like four and five to come down from where you're sniping or come out from where you're sniping and then go and have sort of a bit more impact on the game um, in the last last two turns with the command cards and stuff like that because his one pick does work better when you, you're up close rather than sniping. But I was never keen on casting as a sniper, but then I was very impressed with him in that game when you used him, Nick, and having K2 in the position that you managed to use him where he could... Um, calculate the odds for the first few turns and then was still within range to come and score at the end, I thought was very useful. Um, I like the Ascension cables on Cassian. If you're going to snort with him up high, it allows yeah. him to just not lose an activation and move down. He'll just be able to climb down and then move. It gives you something worth thinking about if you want to still affect them later turns with your Cassian build. So, yeah, cool. Um, for me, I'm just going to go with something that's pretty just basic and has been around the game from the very beginning. I really like the Rebels ATRTs. Don't know why. <laughs> I just like them. I like them a lot. Um, at the five black dice, surging to crit is nothing to be laughed at. can do some serious damage. And I just like the fact that it's armour, but it's cheap armour. Yeah. That makes sense. So, if you catch someone's list and they've not planned for armor, so they're thinking, okay, I'm just going to ignore a tank. Okay, let's say that's what most people would do. ATST is on the board, you just ignore it. Where if you've got three ATRTs, you can't really just ignore them, but they're going to still soak up a lot of firepower because of the armor, if that makes sense, without the impact. And that's what I like, that's what I like about them. I think they're versatile. They move quite quick with their larger base and speed two, they can get around the board. Range three, five black dice, surge to crit. They can do a lot of damage. And they don't have to worry about just normal uh, weapons without impact because a lot of it just bounces off the armour. What lets them down is they don't save well at all. Any hits that go through, having a white dice with no surge, they take a lot of wounds. Yeah. 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 Um, There was a few games on, on the channel that I remember watching. And I can't remember who was playing, but there was another, um, there was um, an ATRT, and I wished it had a flamethrower on it because I think you was playing. Lee. I can't remember who you was playing against, and you walk you walk the ATRT right into um, the like almost into the other deployment deployment zone, and you just okay. shoot at them. And someone someone needs to put a flamethrower on it because I bet it's so much fun with a flamethrower. I agree, and I thought about running flamethrower like uh, going for a 2-1 spread, two rotaries and one flamer. I think yeah. where it will absolutely excel is against droids. I think where it falls mm. apart is against the clones and the standbys because you <laughs> just can't get, you can't get into the range. But I do think there is room for a flamer coming back on the ATRT, definitely. And I think where you might see them become more relevant is if you start to see them droid lists with lots of activations, yeah, so you've yes, got imagine yeah. you've got six units of B1s, and the BX droids that are coming out um, are going to be very good in melee and very good up close. So I've seen a lot of talk about using the BX droids to get, uh, obviously, to start with Scout 3 to move up the board very quickly and yeah. harass the enemy, get up close and like um, hand-to-hand 
why you march up with your six units to be one behind. They've not been shot at because the BXs have been getting shot at where I think if you've got a flamer, that's going to be very good against the BXs. And then by the time the B1s arrive on objectives, it's also going to be able to do work for you then as well. So. Well, I, I think on that note, I think um, the rebel army or the rebel like troopers are not very good at deleting activations. So like, the, the things the things that you have in your army that do damage are like the heroes mostly. Yeah. So so if you take some um, vehicles with same flamethrowers, now you suddenly have the ability to like delete a unit all in one go. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I do think though that the um, I sort of fell out of love with the Z6 on the rebels, um, and we've played a couple of games where we've proxied the Ion Trooper as the rebels DLT because we can't get the pack in the UK for the upgrade. But the, um, the actual Rebel DLT, adding two black and a white, a critical one, to a Rebel unit, really good. It's like six black and a white with yes. critical one. It's, it's yes. a pretty, pretty good dice pool. Um, and then when me and Nick played the other day, that the game, yeah, it's just come out, hasn't it, Nick, on the channel? This, this, yeah. was this week's game, wasn't it? I was using the DLT. I was impressed with the Rebels. It actually gives them a bit more firepower. And it also helps because you can have a little bit more of a, a battle where you was normally outranged by Stormtroopers DLTs, but you're not anymore. So, yeah, I do like that gun a lot on the Rebels, and I think it's an upgrade that's really worth considering over the Z6. Yeah, so when, um, on, on that note, talking about the, uh, the Z6, when we started playing um, and I got my clone, clone core set and the first couple of games we played, I did bring the, uh, the Z6, but I think that the problem the problem is when you don't have the phase twos to like feed the surge tokens to you, you don't get very many hits on the white dice. No, no you so, don't. So so when you so when you compare it to the other heavy weapon, which is like the two red that the clones can 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 bring on on the phase ones, it's just like you get two red dice, critical one is just so much better than six yeah. white dice with no keywords. Yeah. Agreed. I think that's always been the thing with the Z6, though, hasn't it? Since the very gap this game come out and the Rebels had it, the ceiling with the Z6 is so hard. You can have that miracle roll and roll two hits and two crits, as well as your four black dice, and you're like, wow, that's amazing. But then there's them rolls where you roll your six white and you just look down and there's a lot of blank faces looking back at you and you've, you're so disappointed. It's yeah. got such, It's so swingy of a gun where your two red are just so consistent. And that, as I think as a player where you like your odds and stuff, I think having the consistency in the shot is, is very key. Yes, well, where, where I do think it shines is if you do have the phase twos and you can fit the surge tokens and the aims because the clones have the ability to, to share all the aims. Um, so re-rolling you know, the white dice three, four, five times you yeah. can actually get a lot of hits out of um, a Z6 a gun. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah. It. That, it makes the Z6, which its downside is its inconsistency. It just turns it into a very consistent weapon. And if it was consistent, then it's definitely better, if that makes yeah, sense. Yes. So, so, so when I get my face two guys, I will crush you. <laughs> <laughs> We're not having him back on the channel, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> not welcome. So, have you been, what you've been working on at all, Lee? What you've been painting this week? Oh, so I've just finished Padme. Um, so she's actually ready to go. Um, I just wanted to get her out of the way um, before <laughs> before the Arc Troopers come out because I'm gonna have yeah. three boxes of Arc Troopers to paint. Pretty much. So, so I think we're, yeah, at the time of recording this, we're a few days away from Arc's meant to be releasing. So that's going to be interesting. I've been trying to clear my painting table, waiting for. I've pre-ordered three boxes of the BX droids. So. I'm going to have a lot of painting to do. The one good thing about droids is the paint up real quick, real easy. So it shouldn't be too much of a job. And fingers crossed they're not as hard as the B1s to build and I don't end up with droid arms glued to my fingers and stuff like that. So <laughs> I'm sure anyone that's built droids and anyone that knows me will tell me I absolutely hate assembling the models. It's the worst bit. Don't mind painting. Love the playing. Just dislike the building. Yeah, so, so. so on, on that note, let's let's talk about like what has been the most challenging like part for you to get like about getting into Legion? So I, I can I can start. So so for me, I've never painted a model in my life until I started playing. 
So we yeah. we bought we bought um, a couple of Clone um, Clone Wars core sets, and I went and got some paints. And that was literally the first model I ever painted was the Phase One Clone Trooper. Okay. Um, so that's what I spent my lockdown doing. So in the four months, you know, I've, I've, I've painted the entire like what two of the core sets that were split. Um, yeah. But that's the most challenging part has been just learning to paint. And it's and been think, like it's the most intimidating part about the game for me. Yeah, you know, I don't, don't want to play. I don't want to play with grey, boring models. I kind of want them to look semi decent at least. Yeah. yeah, and to be fair, for a first time painter, you've done a good job. Your clones look that really nice. You R two D two and C three PO is you know amazing, and Padme looks very good as well. So you know, I think you've, you've come in the short time that you have painted, you can be very happy with the standard that you've achieved, to be honest. I think it's very good. If you want to see some of the stuff that we're painting, guys, check out our Instagram with everything that we paint. We post up on there so people can have a look at it and stuff to check that out. I think, for me, I think, I don't mind the painting sort of things. I enjoy it. I do it on an evening when everybody else has like gone to bed. It's, it's more relaxation at the end of the day. So I didn't really find that as a barrier because I had previous experience. I've definitely got better as a painter from the time of painting in November because I've painted so much. So I've literally, since November, I've painted a pretty much full Rebel list, full Droid list, and a full Empire list all yeah, since you, November. Yeah. Like yeah, I said, I had some loud. time off work because of having to have my knee sorted out. So I had the time, but it's definitely improved my skill, which I'm uh, you know, really pleased about. But the thing that I found the most challenge was the volume. Obviously, we wanted to have the channel up and running, but we can't just keep running the same units week in, week out. So I knew that there was a bit of pressure on me on the painting. And if you could have seen my dining room table at one point, it must have had probably 70 models on it. And I was just like, I'm never going to be able to do all this. <laughs> so in the end, I put some of them away. And I, I think this is a good tip to anybody that gets into painting and has a lot to paint. Just do it in small sections. Don't overwhelm yourself with stuff because it will just, you'll get to the point where there's that much there. You just painting will become in, unenjoyable. Um, so yeah, I, that was it really for me. It was just the volume that I had to get done in the amount of time. But yeah. I think, about I think the. F- the fact, sorry, the fact that you're painting three armies um, at the same time, just trying to keep up with the three armies. I don't know. I don't know how you do it. I mean, correct. I think the, the keeping up bit. The one thing, the, the disadvantage is there's obviously a lot. The advantage is I can switch between and paint what I want to paint. So, for example, painting white stormtroopers. If that's all I was painting for four days in a row, I would have got so bored. But one day I paint stormtroopers, the next day I pick up my rebels and paint my rebels. Yeah. I kept the variety, so it did help me in one sense, but the volume was was daunting at one point. But how about you then, Nick? So obviously you you don't paint, do you? But you've had to get into the game, but you do all the editing for the channel and stuff. So what have you found challenging from that sort of things and having a YouTube? Well, from a game aspect, I think I was a bit beyond at the start. Like I didn't really look into it much. I just came and played and. Yeah, I was behind, so that put that could have put me off a bit, and it did to a certain extent. But instead of being like, oh, I'm just I can't play, I just went and watched and watched and read stuff and tried to get better. I downloaded TTS to try and play a few games on there, and yeah. then from an editing aspect, I mean, I'd never really messed with editing software before. Um, I'd had the odd look at college and stuff and messing about with little things, but it's been a nice learning curve. Like, it's a lot of messing around to get things right. I don't think my editing's anywhere near amazing where it could be, but I think it's certainly improved since we started the channel. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's part of the journey, isn't it? And that's, you know, as long as we are improving and growing, I'm absolutely fine with that. It was never going to be an uh, overnight success, but there's not many things that are. Is that It's all about hard work and consistency, and I think we've found that out, and it's getting to that point now where we're getting a lot of good feedback in the comments and stuff and it, it is um, very rewarding but I completely agree with you Nick on what you said where you had to go away and learn because I'm someone that when I get some, a new game I want to get good, I, I want to read everything listen to podcasts, learn the game inside out and I think me and Ilya learned a little bit quicker than what you did and you yeah, sort of got left behind but then you've gone away and you've made that adjustment, made that improvement and the last few games that we've had have been very... You went on a mad win streak on the on the channel, which I'm happy to say um, <laughs> has come to an end. But, 
Um, but I do think you are become the, the most improved player, which is really good to see. And um, yeah, so yeah, our last couple on? of games has been have been real good, proper real enjoyable close. games. Real close. Mm. So, yeah. Um, and that brings us on to something that I want to talk about for the channel and what we've got planned for the near future. So we're in the process of moving studio, but once we've moved studio and it's all set back up and we're up and running, hopefully in the process of moving, there'll be no disruption to us releasing videos. We've got plans to keep going with a battle report once a week. Um, but once we've moved, we're planning on running uh, an eight-person tournament on the channel, which we're really excited about doing. So this is everyone that's learnt the game since November that's played on the channel. There is now eight of us. So we're going to have a knockout tournament where, because not everybody has armies, we're going to play where we both have an A and a B list. So everyone will play their A list unless you play someone that wants to use the same faction. So if I'm playing uh, Rebels, but so is Nick. If we draw one another, uh, we'll roll off and whoever loses has to play their B list. And then eventually we'll get down to a final and we'll have a little winner and we'll crown a champion for hopefully just in the back end of 2020. And that will be our champion until we run um, another tournament. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm um, excited about how much enthusiasm the new players have had for wanting to do it as well. So look, we've got Clancy and Pem that have just started playing and now it's like, yeah, great idea, let's do it. Steve's still like playing and still learning the game. He's not um, has probably invested as much time as everyone else to learn the game, but he's still relatively new. Then we've got Spud, and then we've got our friend Ben, who through lockdown um, was having a bag and stuff and had to stay in. Um, but he's going to eventually now be able to come down and get on the channel. But we've been having a little chat, and we secretly think that Ben's been playing on TTS three or four mm. games a week, and he's actually going to be really good when he comes down, <laughs> and, he, and he won't be a rookie at all. This, uh, there's one thing about Ben that we know from playing games with. He's probably the most competitive out of yeah. all of us, really. And Definitely. Ben's renowned for uh, dodge well, throwing and all sorts. So. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Yeah. So, what kind of list do you guys? Um, what kind of list do you guys want to bring? Do you want to bring something that's fun to play, or do you want to bring something that you think will win? It's like how are you going to approach? You know. Yeah. The so. Tournament? Me, personally, I will want to play something that I enjoy playing. I, I'm not, I know there might be a better list, but I want to play something that's a little bit my own. I don't mind if it is so-called meta or not, but as long as I enjoy the list for me. I couldn't play something that I don't enjoy, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I've got, I've got got I'll probably be a mix of both for the tournament. I say I want to enjoy the list like Lee, but then obviously I do want it to be a competitive list as well. I've been speaking to Lee quite a bit recently about the games on the channel and I'd much rather bring to a game we're filming a list that's just fun. Like it yeah. might not be the best list, but it's a fun list for the channel. And I think it, it makes that, yeah, it makes for good TV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah well, people yeah. that watch it then get to see stuff that's not always played and they yeah. might not yeah. take, they might never take. And, you know, I just like to look at lists on or tabletop admiral and stuff, and just think I ain't played with them. Oh, yeah, I'll play them. What can I put in with them? Do you know what I mean? Instead of, oh, let's look at who the meta list is at the moment, oh, I'm just going to take all of that. Isn't it funny how people approach the game differently? Because, like, I mean, I have a lot of fun when I win. <laughs> so mm. if, I, if I crush you, I'm having fun. <laughs> yeah, but I, I've played Magic with Ilya, and he's just renowned for being Mr. Meta, really. <laughs> Pretty I'm much, just, could, I'm just could, pretty much could be lead nickname, <laughs> couldn't it, Mister Meta? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just a competitive person, so like, oh, you know, when I play, I want to win. You know, Nick very much plays for fun, so every time we've played a game with Nick, you know, he enjoys the game. <laughs> so whether he's yeah. winning or he's losing, he's he's enjoying the process. <laughs> yeah. I so said, don't get me wrong, I don't like to lose by any stretch of the imagination, but. I don't mind losing a game if it's been competitive and, and I've had fun, if that makes sense. So there's been a couple of games that I've played with Nick where I've got beat, but it's been my best experience playing Legion so far. Yeah. I yeah, don't, see, for me, uh, I don't uh, mind losing the game where I think I've done everything I could and I lost the game. 
but it's it's not you know it's not sort of my fault you know I lost because you sort of outplayed me or whatever. It will bug me if I lost the game because say I made a mistake. Yes. Mm. Okay, I'll give, I'll give you an example of what I'm saying where I'll, I want to put stuff on the table that I want to play with. So I like Rebels. So the longest time, Tontons was just amazing for Rebels, weren't they? But I was just, in my head, I was just like, look, I don't like the look of Tontons. It's basically a big goat. I don't want a big goat running around my battlefield. <laughs> that was how I looked at Tontons. I didn't really like him in the film. They're just all right, aren't they? What do they do? They just freeze to death on a cold planet. If they live on, they're just a bit useless. But then, so I just didn't want to put them on the table, so I didn't. But I have bought three boxes of Tontons and they've stayed sealed. I've not opened them. I've not got around to painting them yet. But we will get them on the channel eventually because I know that the key and people want to see them. But you know, I'm not saying I'm going to love playing Tontons and I won't be playing them in the tournament. Let's put it that way. Oh, they're so good, though. They're so good. <laughs> yeah, but it's a big goat. He's a big goat. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I drive a run triple A to yard, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I guess we're getting close to coming to the end there. A little, that's just a bit of an introduction, really, to us and the channel, what we like about Legion and what we've got planned for the channel. As we get into more weeks and we do more episodes, we'll probably do a bit more breakdowns and we'll have a lot of topics that we genuinely want to talk about but we're really open for suggestions guys so get down in the comments let us know what you want to hear us talk about um, it might be stuff to do with the actual YouTube sort of things and that someone wants to set up their own channel it could be the hobby sort of things you know we've got loads of train videos and I love making trains if you want any help with stuff like that reach out to us and we'll help you um, but yeah get in touch with us what you want us to talk about we're happy to have a chat Check out our social medias. Uh, we're on Facebook, um, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have Patreon. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do so. We're really pushing hard for a 1,000 uh, subscribers. And we just want to make good ton- content that entertains people. Guys, is there anything that you want to add to that? Ilya, go first. Anything you want to add to that? Or have I summed it all up? Yeah, guys. And down below um, in the comments, just let us know what is your favorite faction and why. And what would be your favourite unit and why? Agreed. Agreed. I like that. Let us know, yeah. Reach out. Let us know, know what you like playing. Nick? No, no. I think you covered everything from my side. Okay. Fantastic. So that's been episode one of the Dark Sword podcast. Uh, stay tuned and we'll have more coming soon. <laughs>